how long does it take you to uh, do a space clearing? On average home, three, four hours, but then you have larger homes. You're talking five, six. When I do a firm, I recently did a 21,000 square foot firm. It took almost 12 hours and that was divided into What periods. kind of firm was it? It was a ch uh, financial firm, mm -hmm. a, tr a trading firm. I did uh, some work for Melody Hobson and um, Aerial Capital Management. Now they're in Aerial Investing. And it was, it was wonderful to do it, you know, to really see. And how long ago was that? Oh, just two, three months ago. And, and it, it'd be interesting to see if their new company is doing better financially. Well, what was interesting is I actually did a firm called Warm Spirit mm -hmm. and their uh, personal care products firm. And the president called me back two or three months after the space clearing. And she wanted to give me some feedback. She said that they'd brought in people several weeks after the space clearing. And someone came up to her, the president of the company, and said, this is going to sound weird, but you, the space is extremely different. What did you do in here? It's mm -hmm. really light, and it's really filled with light. You know, so it was a lay person. It was not someone who was trained energetically. Or, and it was unsolicited feedback. Completely. The person and, and was sitting in the... And did you change the lighting? No, 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 no. It had nothing to do with the physical lighting. I mean, they did do some changes in the furniture placement, that sort of thing. But it has to do with the gunk. It, it really released the gunk that the space held. And mm -hmm. it created much more of an open ambiance for people well, to... Well, I think the working environment would be better. The relationships be between the employees would be better. Uh, I think employees would take less time off of work for sick. One of the things that you want to be aware of is a space clearing takes time. You know, sometimes, like for instance, after space clearing, people will quit. Uh, the company will winnow a division, take it away. There, there's a resettling period that comes. So, you know, sometimes there is a restructuring that happens after space clearing before a company moves into a deeper space of really being able to hold itself. Now, uh, since you've done work in the North Shore, and, you know, please don't name names, but uh, could you talk about, like, some of the North Shore homes that you've space cleared? Um, I do a lot of body work clients in the North Shore area. Mm -hmm. As far as the space clearing areas, I do work in Glencoe and Winnetka and Wilmette. Oh, that's, that's, that, a... that's, that's our uh, viewing audience. Just, you know, is there any common themes? Think about of our audience, if you, you know, what would you want to tell the North Shore resident or parent? I mean, I think it's, I think the themes are the universal human themes, you know, of how to balance work and family, how to keep deep relationships going, how to, in the midst of the daily chaos, really have some spiritual movement forward. I mean, they're the kinds of themes, you know, perhaps because there's more of a level of affluence there's more of a readiness to be able to take something new on because mm. you're not so, like the patients in the psychiatric hospital, they were just so pounded with everyday existence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe there's more of a capacity to now move to the next level. You know, mm. things are up and running. Mm -hmm. How do we deepen things? How do we deepen our relationships? How do we make this space not just physically beautiful, but something that holds us emotionally? Now, uh you mentioned body work, uh, so you actually do your body work in people's homes? Yes, some of my clients actually travel too, okay. you know, because their schedules are so hectic, mm -hmm. and so then I'll work with them there. Do you, do you find doing body work in people's homes is better for the person receiving the massage or body work? Oh, you know, it depends. You know, when someone is in my studio, my space is space cleared, so sometimes when I'm doing body work there, there's a really deep level of being able to release. Mm -hmm. But when people are in their home, there's a level that they're really cared for. You know, there's a way that they can, you know, really be held in the massage mm -hmm. and really um, unfold because they're safe, they're in their home, they're in their own environment. So, I mean, in all the things that I do, space clearing, ISIS, or body work, it has to do with people really moving to much higher levels of themselves within themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you mentioned ISIS. Uh, why don't you tell our audience what ISIS is and um, how you use it for yourself and for your clients. ISIS is a, a meditation-based um, inner exploration work. It's an acronym for inner space, interactive sourcing. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with a client, I'm working with um, having them enter a meditation space first 
so that we can access more of them instead of just the rational how mind. Do, how do you help your patients enter a meditative state? You do it through working with the third eye. Mm -hmm. my, my work is third eye based. Mm -hmm. So you have them aware of qualities of light or of sound or of space in the eye. And it, it brings a space, similar probably to what would happen for you in your hypnotherapy work. But ours is, you know, the, those of us who do ISIS, it's very much based in a um, certain specific space that is um, a hallmark of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And so when people are held in that space, they then go exploring. And it can be something that happened last week. It can be something that happened in childhood. It can be something that happened in sometimes a past life. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, it all, it's fairly spontaneous what surfaces. You're just providing an, an ambiance and a stillness and a container for them to do their work. Years ago, I was a rebirther. So that bringing a person into a space where they can do exploration was similar. But here you have the, the added thing that most of the people who are working with me in ISIS are also doing meditation. So they're really starting to cultivate other aspects of themselves. Mm -hmm. So the level of depth that they can go to. Now, is there communication between you and uh, your client who's doing ISIS? Yeah, the ISIS? person is usually, is, is, is usually lying down, and there is an interactive exchange. Like they mm -hmm. might, I'll ask them, what are you experiencing? And mm -hmm. they might say, oh, nothing. And then you say, well, is it a boring nothing? Is it a calm nothing? And then you get the feedback and you start going in and you start seeing what's happening. You're not leading so much as you're um, providing reflection and, and a, a trying to move people into levels of depth where mm -hmm. they can um, explore. And there are two parts to ISIS, and, and this is really important. Part of it is really exploring what's happening emotionally, but sometimes ISIS is about beginning to map states of consciousness that are beyond the ken or beyond the reach of daily waking consciousness.